Hi, good morning guys. This is Ronnie Velasquez with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties. And today's class is going to be about working with buyers. Now, the first thing that I want to say about the class is that this is a three-hour class that we're going to videotape right now in 30 minutes. So my recommendation is that you really need to come here to the class and take the class. It's a three-hour class. We offer it every month. So check with uh, your manager, check with, uh, with Tim Russia Corporate Office or Ali or uh, anybody at Corporate Office really can tell you what the schedule is. So that's the first thing. So let's get started because we have a lot of things to cover. Today we're going to be talking about buyers, specifically how to prospect for buyers, uh, what questions to ask buyers, how to pre-qualify buyers, etc., etc. So that's what we're going to talk about. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is the mega open house. Now the mega open house is a concept that I learned many years ago. And uh, I was, it was kind of surprising when I went to the training and I, and I learned about the mega open house. Now, the mega open house versus traditional open houses, the goal of the mega open house is to bring anywhere between 40 to 60 people during one weekend or a three-day event into an open house so you can get more traffic, you can get possible multiple offers on the property, and you can get more leads out of that, that mega open house that you do. So um, the mega open house, once again, the purpose of it is to bring a lot of traffic into the house. What is the difference between the mega open house and a regular open house? Well, the difference is this. In a, in a mega open house, the most important thing is to market that open house. The concept of the mega open house, let me, let me explain you the concept so it's a little bit easier to understand, is if you invite them, some people will come. That's the main concept of the mega open house. The mega open house is if you invite them, some other people will come. Let me give you an example of this so you know where I'm going with this. Let's say, for example, that you're married. And let's say, for example, that your spouse, being a good spouse, uh, knows that you, your birthday is coming up and your spouse decided to throw you a, uh, a party, you know, a surprise party, so to speak, right? So your spouse comes in and they call the catering company and they called, um, he called the catering company, uh, brings, you know, flowers, you know, uh, balloons, you know, uh, things for the kids to enjoy and things like that, wine, cheese, you know, etc. all the things, right? But your spouse forgot one thing. Your spouse forgot to invite people. Now, here's a question for you. If you have everything ready, you have the balloons and you have the jumpers and you have the catering and you have the food and the wine and cheese and all of these things, but your spouse forgot to invite people, how many people do you think is going to show up? Well, in reality, maybe none. Uh, maybe the neighbors. If they hear a lot of noise, they'll come and see what's going on, right? So the, look at it from the other perspective. Let's say, for example, that your spouse did all of these things, plus he sent out 500 written invitations. He invited 500 people to come to the, uh, to the party. Now the question is, how many people do you think are going to come? 500? No, not really. 500 people are not going to show up to the party. You'll probably get a return of around 10%. You know, 10%. About 50 people will come to the party. Now, here's a question for you. Would you be okay with having a party with 50 of your closest friends and family? Obviously you would, especially if you have catering and things like that. You have a really good time, super time with those people, right? The concept of the mega open house is exactly the same. If you invite people to come, some of them will come. Some of them will come. So the, so the thing that we need to focus on here is how do we market that mega open house to bring a lot of people? And once the people come in, what is it that we're going to say to them? What is it that we're going to talk about with them, right? Because the other challenge that we have is what to say and what to do when we're talking to these people. So we're going to cover the scripts and dialogues as well. Let's, go, let's jump into the mega open house really quick, okay? So once again, the concept of the mega open house is to bring 80 to 100 prospects in one weekend. Now, we have certain rules. Before you can start doing a mega open house, we have certain rules that we need to abide by. One of the rules is this. Um, the purpose of that open house is to sell that house. That's the first concept of the mega open house is to sell that house. You really want to bring enough people so you can want multiple offers, you can get a bidding war against the property, and you can sell that property. That's, that's number one. But number two, obviously, is that how many buyers do you need for a property? Really? How many really good buyers do you need for a property? In reality, you need only one. The one that is willing to pay the most amount of money, close in the shorter amount of time, with the least amount of problems. That's the buyer you want, really, right? So you only need one buyer. Well, what's going to happen with the, all the other buyers that are coming to the house? Well, those can become potential clients for you as well. So the rule number two is that you also need to do the open house to prospect for new business. But once again, rule number three says, don't forget that rule number one supersedes rule number two, which is you, your main focus of attention is to try to sell that house. I mention this because I noticed that a lot of real estate agents 
uh, they give up too soon. They give up too soon. Let me explain you how that works. As you're doing an open house, somebody comes to the open house and they say, well, the kitchen is too small. And as soon as somebody says the kitchen is too small, you start trying to sell them another property. You're like, oh my God, don't worry about the kitchen. You know, I have another property with a bigger kitchen. Uh, you know, this property is larger, is 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 uh, cheaper than this one, is better than this one, is more beautiful than this one. Guess what? You just gave him like five reasons not to buy this house. Don't give up on people so easily. The very first thing that you need to realize, first of all, you need to take a step back. You need to take a breath. You know, like, okay, somebody says the kitchen is too small. When people say things to you, when, when consumers say things to you, all right, they're going to say one of three things. Number one, they're going to say comments. Number two, they're going to give you objections. And number three, they're going to give you conditions. Comments, objections, and conditions. You need to know the difference between comments, objections, and conditions. Let me explain you how this works. Somebody says, well, the kitchen is too small. I say, all right, I understand the kitchen is too small. I agree with you. Let me ask you a question. If we were to ask the seller to remodel the kitchen and make it larger for you, if it's possible, obviously, you have to look at the layout. But if, if it's possible to remodel the kitchen and make it larger, would you be interested in making an offer then? So what you're doing here is just basically taking, the com taking whatever they say and trying to figure out if this is a common an objection or a condition. So they say, well, the kitchen is too small. And then you say, well, let me ask you this. Be that the kitchen is too small, would you be willing to make an offer that the kitchen was larger? And they say yes. You, that's an objection you just overcame, right? That's an objection you just overcame. Now, if they say the kitchen is too small, and you say, well, be that the kitchen is too small, would you still be interested in making an offer? And they say, well, you know, we'll have to make an offer because this, this is the lowest price property in this area, and we cannot find anything else similar to this. So even though the kitchen is too small, we'll still be interested in making an offer. That's just a comment. A comment is things that people say that has absolutely no bearing on whether or not they purchase a property or not. So you have to know the difference between a comment, or something that somebody says that has no bearing on whether or not they purchase a property, an objection, something that somebody says that needs to be overcome because objections need to be overcome, and then the last part is a condition. And the condition of, it's a condition of purchase, as I call it. Let's say, for example, that they come to the house and you're doing an open house on a property that is two bedroom, one bathroom. And they say to you, well, uh, you say, well, would you like to make an offer? And they say, well, no, because the house is only two-bedroom, one-bathroom. We're looking for a four-bedroom, two-bathroom home. That's a condition. I don't care how you try to play it around. You cannot move people from a two-bedroom, one-bathroom home, in, in, uh, from a four-bedroom, two-bathroom home, I'm sorry, to a two-bedroom, one-bathroom home. It's just not going to happen. That's a condition of purchase. At that point in time, you say, well, you know what? Maybe this property is not for you, but I do have other properties that I can help you, uh, I can help you with. And we're going to go through the scripts in a little bit, but right now, let's just keep it simple like that. So watch this now. You have three things. Once again, you have comments, objections, conditions. You need to know the difference. You need to know the difference. That's the first step of becoming a good real estate agent is knowing the difference of what people tell you. All right. So uh, let's say that that's, uh, that's that. Let's move to the next part. In order to do a mega open house, we have other rules. Now, remember that I told you that you're going to be marketing that open house. You're going to be marketing that open house. I'm going to give you some tools that you're going to use to market that open house. So, because you're going to be spending time marketing this open house, I always say open house, mega open houses to start on Monday. Mega open houses to start on Monday. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that on Monday is the day you're going to start working on marketing that open house because you have to invite as many people as you can to come to the open house so you can get a good return. So uh, the first rule about the mega open house in regards to this is the following. You need to have some control over the listing. Now, in most cases, um, you're not going to be doing mega open houses on your listing. You're probably going to be mega open houses on other people's listings. Why? Because you don't have that many, you may not have, may not have that many listings to be able to do open houses. So you're going to be doing open houses for other agents, which is perfectly fine. But here's a question that you need to ask the agent. First of all, is the property still available? Do you have any offers on the property? How long has the property been on the market, et cetera, et cetera? What you're looking for is a property that doesn't have any offers yet because once again, the purpose of the open house is to sell that house. And if they say, well, we don't have any offers yet, this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask them, do me a favor. Uh, I'm going to do a mega open house on Saturday or Sunday or Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to be marketing a lot. Do me a favor. If you do receive an offer on that property, would you at least wait until Sunday to present the offer just to give me an opportunity to see if I can come up with another offer? See if they can say that, if they can agree to that, all right? So there's a level of control there. The second thing in regards to location. In regards to the location of the property, 
make sure that this property is located within your area where you work. Um, uh, either it's close to your home or close to your office or someplace in between. Uh, don't make the mistake of doing open houses far away from where you work. Let's say, for example, I work Orange County. Let's say, for example, I work, you know, Buena Park, Anaheim, etc., right? I would not do a mega open house for another agent that is not my listing, for example, and let's say Arcadia. I have no idea what's going on in Arcadia. I don't know the area. I don't know, you know, let's say, for example, I don't know the area in Arcadia, for example. And number one, number two is that the people who are looking for houses in Arcadia are looking to buy houses in Arcadia. That means that even if I got somebody that is interested in buying a property in Arcadia, I'm going to have to be driving from Orange County to Arcadia to show them properties, to sign paperwork, to let them in the house, to let the inspector in the house, the home inspector in the house, etc., etc. And that makes you less productive. That makes you less productive. So I see some agents that, let's say, for example, they work Orange County and they travel to Victorville to do an open house. That's a long way to travel to do an open house, number one. And number two, once you get clients in Victorville, guess what? You're going to be spending the next 45 days driving to Victorville uh, to show the properties. And that's not going to be very productive for you. It would be better if you just relay that information. If you relate that open house to another agent, let somebody else do it that works in that area. Number three. How long is the property in the market? How long has the property been in the market? Remember that if the property has been on the market for more than three weeks, everybody that wanted to see the property probably already came and see the property. If they have no offers on the property, there may be something wrong with the price, there may be something wrong with the condition of the property. So those are things to consider. All right. One thing, um, one thing that I forgot about location, one last thing that I forgot about location is this. Make sure that property has good foot traffic. Good for traffic. That means that a lot of people are able to find the property. And stay away from properties that are really difficult to find. If you need 37 signs to find that property, chances are that property is, is too hidden away. Nobody's going to find it. So you need good for traffic. Make sure the property is accessible. Make sure it has enough parking. Make sure that if it's gated community, the gate remains open so people don't have an issue trying to get into the community and so on and so forth. Make sure the property is accessible. That's another thing regarding to in regards to location. In regards to the uh, how long it's been on the market and in regards to the sales price, make sure that you also check the value of the property before you do an open house. It's going to be really super hard to sell a property that is overpriced. That is, let's say, $50,000 overpriced, $100,000 overpriced. It's going to be really difficult to sell. And remember, the purpose of the open house is to, one, once again, not only to generate leads, but to try to sell that property for you to find a buyer for the property. Uh, next one, uh, has it had a price reduction? Has the property had a price reduction? If the property has a price reduction, more than a market in the open house, you want to market the price reduction. So you want to make it really big, like $40,000 price reduction, for example. $40,000 price reduction. Uh, you want to say things like, this property must sell this weekend, three days only. We will present all offers. You really want to market that. You need a lot of signage to says price reduction in front of the property. You need flyers that, you know, that make it really, really big, you know, price reduction, etc., etc. That's what you need to do to bring people back into the house. Uh, the next one is, uh, are you going to market that open house? Here's the next thing about mega open houses. You have to make a decision to market that open house. Because if you don't, then this is not going to work. So you really have to make that decision. I'm going to show you the process, but once again, you have to make the decision on actually doing it. And the next thing is, um, do you know the right questions to ask? Here's another complaint that I always have about most, uh, not most, but some real estate agents. You go to the open houses and you don't know how to talk to people. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. You don't know what questions to ask, how to ask the questions. You don't even know the answers to the questions that they give you. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared not only to ask questions, but to ask the right questions. And the next part is also to answer the questions that they have. They need somebody that is knowledgeable. They need somebody that has experience and knowledge in regards not only to the property, but is able to answer questions about the property, about the area, about the schools, about the price of the property, about the monthly payments, about the financing, about closing costs, about ratios, etc., etc. You need to be able to answer all those questions. And you, in turn, need to be able to ask the necessary questions you need to ask them in order to qualify them for, you know, for the things that are important. We're going to cover that in a second. And then the next part is, are you prepared to follow up with your leads? Uh, here's the other thing that kind of, you know, a little bit bothered me a little bit, right? 
is when I see real estate agents really marketing that open house. I mean, they're crushing it, right? And they go do the open house and, and they get like 50 people in the house and they get their book. It's full of names and phone numbers and email addresses and everything. And then they go back to the office and they put, put the book on their desk and they never open it again. I mean, what is the sense of that, really? What is the sense of that? What is the sense of you spending all this time and effort trying to market a property to get a bunch of names, to try to sell the house and get a bunch of names on the book, and then you're not going to call any of them? What is the sense of that? It doesn't make any sense. So you need to make a decision right now that you, if you're going to do this and you're going to be successful at doing this, you at least are going to follow up on the people that came to the open house, and I think that's important. So let's go to the next part. Mega open house marketing. Mega open house marketing. Marketing starts on Monday. Marketing starts on Monday. So remember, the basic concept of the mega open house is if you invite them, some will come. So my goal through this process is that you invite at least, at least a minimum of 1,500 people. 1,500. Yes, it is doable. Believe me, it's not that complicated. It may seem like a, a big number, but in reality it's not. I want you to invite anywhere between 1,500 to 4,000 people, if not more. I'm going to show you some of the steps to do that. Let's just start first of all with the flyer. In regards to the flyer, uh, I, want to, I want to give you some, uh, some pointers in regards to the flyer. Number one, the flyer, there is a very thin line between too many pictures and too little pictures. See, one of the things in regards to the flyer is that the flyer has to create curiosity. Curiosity for people to come in and see the property. So, if you put two little pictures, you're not going to create curiosity. But, when, but then again, if you put too many pictures, you're going to show them everything that is to show on the property. And they don't care, they don't want to come anymore, right? So, there is a very thin line. So, you need to make sure that your flyers don't have too little pictures or too many pictures in, in order to create that curiosity. Okay, curiosity. As a matter of fact, there's a video on YouTube that I watched one time and this guy just nailed it, nailed it right in the head. I absolutely love that video. He was doing a video to promote the open house and he says, hey guys, you know, I'm going to do this open house on Saturday. I want you to come in. So he's with a camera, right? And he's showing the property. He's like, and you know, I want to, I really want to show you the master bedroom. The master bedroom is fantastic. You know, they just remodeled the master bedroom. It, it has new carpet. It has new walls. It has new everything, walking closet. It has jacuzzi, bathtub. I mean, this master bedroom is amazing and I want to show it to you. So he's walking, right? He's walking to the master bedroom, right? And when he gets to the master bedroom, the door is closed. And it says, shown by appointment only. And he's like, oh, guys, I'm sorry. But if you want to see the master bedroom, you have to call me. So call me now. And, I mean, that was perfect. That, that is perfect, exactly the point that I'm trying to make right now. You have to create such curiosity that people want to come and see what they're missing if they don't come. That's what you want to do. So work on that, all right? So that's, regards, uh, that's in regards to uh, flyers. The second thing in regards to flyers that I need to tell you, is that never waste the backside of a flyer. I see a flyer here, it's just a flyer. And, and I see that whenever they, whenever agents do flyers, they do the front and they never put anything in the back. Why is it that you're not putting anything on the back of flyers? This is perfect marketing space that you're wasting if you don't put anything on the back. So put something on the back. What is it that you want to put on the back? Uh, for the most part, depending on the area that you're working, obviously, for the most part, in most cases, first time home buyers are looking for free money government assistance, down payment assistance program. You want to put something about down payment assistance program. This really attracts curiosity to people. Uh, there's a flyer that we, I give away when you come to the class, uh, the down payment assistance flyer that basically says you can buy this house with as little as, and it gives you a number, right, depending on the purchase price of the property. And let's say it says $2,500. It says you can buy this property with as little as $2,500. And you're like, wow, you know, $2,500 I can buy this house? That's much less than even going to rent another property. Why don't we go and check it out? So things like that. Think about those things. You know, down payment assistance program, free money, government assistance, all of those things work. Next thing to uh, market your property, Facebook. Fa I like Facebook. Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, I like them. I like them a lot. And I'll tell you the reason why I like them. I like them because you can narrow down to the right person to see your ads. You can actually create an ad in Facebook and you can narrow it down to certain criteria. You can narrow it down by zip code. You can narrow it down by income level. You can, there's also a certain criteria in Facebook which is called more likely to buy a home, and there's another one called renters, and there's another one called first-time home buyers. 
Guys, you can create an ad that targets specifically the kind of people you want to see that ad. And I think that's fantastic. And I'll tell you this, you can have up to 20,000 views in Facebook and, and Instagram for about $20. It doesn't cost that much money. So I would, I would really like you to invest some time and some money on, on creating some ads to invite people to open house through Facebook and Instagram. So that's another way of marketing your open house. Next thing, flyer delivery, schools. I love schools. I love schools, by the way. Now, there's certain rules about delivering in school. Uh, the, the, rule, the simplest rule is you cannot deliver flyers inside of the school. You cannot do that, not even in the waiting area. But you can, what you can do, and i show you this example here. It's a little, it's a line. I don't know if you can see it really well, but there's a line of cars right here, right? You know how cars usually park themselves around the, the, the school when they come and pick up the kids? All you have to do is go around the cars and start delivering flyers. Here's a flyer, here's a flyer, here's a flyer, here's a flyer. I can promise you this, in any elementary school, in any middle school, there's going to be an average of 200 to 300 parents or adults picking up kids on any given day. So if you can go to the school during, uh, after the, the class is finished and the kids are coming out, you can deliver quite literally 200 flyers in about 20 minutes. In about 20 minutes, you can deliver 200 flyers. So this is great. Uh, there are certain rules that you need to know about it. I don't have time to go through those rules right now, but, but you can go out there and you can actually do this. Uh, and go out this weekend. You'll see. Go out this week. Go, go and see that because you will see, even if you don't deliver flyers, just park yourself in front of the school right around the time the kids go out and you can see how many cars come in. So this is a great, great opportunity. Another thing is uh, business, businesses, local businesses. Visit the local businesses. I guarantee you that if somebody owns a business in that area and they don't own a property in the area, more than likely they will want to buy a property in the area if they own a business in that area. Also, the employees of, the pro of this uh, specific location, those employees, if they work in the area, they will want to live in the area as well. So go look at your local businesses. And when you go look at your local businesses, uh, for ex and stay away from the franchises like you know Taco Bell and, and things like that, um, Starbucks and things like that. Go to your mom and pop businesses, nail salon, hair salons, tax places, DMV registration. Uh, go to uh, you know uh, let's say uh, barber shops and things like that, right? Uh, small markets, mini markets, supermarkets, liquor stores and things like that, right? If you can go to local businesses and you can promote that open house, not only that, you can also leave them a stack of flyers that you can deliver them. I have a stance that we create for that. I'll show you how to do that in the training. I can't tell you right now. But we have a stance that we produce for about 75 cents per stand. So they're very, very inexpensive. You can create a stance and you can do, let's say you put 25 flyers per stand. You do 20 uh, stands. You have 500 flyers you can deliver around the area in about 20 local businesses. And it's going to take you literally about three to four hours to do it. Because the local businesses are very close by. You can actually walk from business to business. So this is another great way of promoting that open house. And the beautiful thing is also that when you go to your local businesses, you become known in the area, especially if you're doing your graphic farming. People start to know you in their area, and you can actually get more business out of those. Uh, you can get more leads and more clients out of those businesses. So I think that's important. Let's go to the next part. Uh, delivery. I highly recommend that you deliver your, your flyers by hand. That means that is to say that you pick up your flyers and you go and deliver them yourself. Now, here's the thing in regards to marketing. The purpose of marketing is to create conversations. Here's a big mistake that most agents do. They go to a house, they knock at the door, nobody comes out, they throw the flyer. Don't throw the flyer. Don't throw the flyer. The purpose of that flyer is to create a conversation. If you just throw that flyer, that you defeated the purpose of that flyer, which is to create a conversation. So when I say, go and, 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 and here's 500 flyers, go and have 500 conversations, sometimes you have to door knock a thousand doors before you can get 500 conversations, which is fine. Half of the people are not going to be home. But make sure that when you deliver the flyers, you actually talk to people. Now, for those of you that don't have time to go deliver flyers, you can use the United States Postal Service. They have a service called the Every Door Direct. It only costs 16 cents per piece in order to deliver flyers and you can deliver as little as little as 200 flyers around the area so you can go with as little as like 65 dollars i think is the minimum so you can go from there every door direct look into that because it's a great opportunity to deliver flyers using the postal service uh next one call people call neighbors in the area to invite them to the open house now in order to call people to uh, to invite them to open house you're going to need two things you're going to need an auto dialer because if you start dialing by hand it's going to finish 
uh, you're gonna finish like in three days. I'm not kidding you. It's, it, uh, more than that, it's gonna be like four days. So what you want to do is you want to do an auto dialer. So you got the auto dialer coming and, and dialing, and uh, it's easy, right? The next thing that you need is you're gonna need a list of phone numbers. So there's many different places. If you come to my technology class, I give you like 17 different places where you can purchase phone numbers. One of the companies that I recommend is Agent Pro 24/7. www.agentpro247. And this company, you can purchase leads, and they cost very little. I think it's five cents per lead or something like that. And you can purchase, let's say, 500 of them. That's going to be $25. And using the auto dialer, whichever auto dialer you use is whether it's Call Fire, the one I use is Call Fire, whether you use Call Fire, Real Estate Phone Burner, Mojo Dials, it doesn't matter. You can just call these people and invite them to the open house. So that's another thing that you can do, invite people to open house via phone calls. The next thing that you can do is invite people through your contact database. Okay, invite people through your contact database. If you have a contact database large enough, then you have a lot of people in there. The next thing that you can do is that if this is your own listing, you can also go to the MLS and find out who are the agents that have buyers that are looking to buy property similar to yours through reverse prospecting. If you don't know how to use reverse prospecting, come to my technology class because I teach you how to use reverse prospecting there. So through reverse prospecting, you can find a list of at least, a, a, a list of at least 100 to 150 agents that currently have buyers looking for a home that are similar to yours. You can invite those people to bring their buyers. If this is your listing, obviously, you can invite them to come to the open house and bring their buyers, which I think is a great opportunity. Uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, banded signs. I like banded signs. Now, I don't overuse banded signs. Like, you've seen those banded signs on the street, like, I buy cash for, uh, ca houses for cash or something like that. I, I don't do any of those. What I recommend to use banded signs for is to bring people to the open house. And the banded signs are pretty simple. All you have to do is buy, purchase a banded sign. You can get them on eBay for around 75 cents each. You can buy the banded signs, you can gra grab a marker and put on the market, you know, open house, Saturday and Sunday, 1 through 4, and put the address of the property. And then you take those banded signs and you uh, place them in places where people come and shop. Supermarkets, shopping centers, retail centers, etc., etc. There's a video on YouTube in my YouTube channel called Maya Team TV. My YouTube channel is called Maya Team TV, M-A-Y-A-T-E-A-M dot uh, T-E-A-M TV. So Maya Team TV is in YouTube, you can, you can check it out there. And there's a video in there that's called Street Marketing. And I go seven minutes into detail how to do this on street marketing. So you can do that in, in, in YouTube, okay? So Bandit Signs is another way to bring people in the door. So that's, uh, that's that. And let's go to the last one here. The last one is Open House Signs. And, and here's my, where I, I don't understand sometimes, like agents come and they say, hey, I want to do an open house, can I borrow some signs? And I say, sure, how many do you need? And they say four. And I'm like, four? What are you going to do with four signs? Uh, I put four signs just in front of the house. What are you going to do with the rest of the neighborhood, right? You need to use at least 20 signs for open houses. Now, think about it. I put four signs in front of the house that lives in with a 16 flyer, uh, 16 signs, right? And I put two signs per corner. That's another eight. That's eight corners. So you have eight corners, 16 signs, and plus four in the house. That's 20. That's just the minimum amount that I recommend that you use in regards to uh, in regards to signage, okay? All right, so uh, how many prospects do you want in your open house? 10, 20, 50, 60, 80? It's totally up to you. You really need to market that open house. Now, having said that, obviously, this video is a 30-minute video of a three-hour class. So as you can tell, I'm going pretty fast. I highly recommend that you come to the training because there's a lot more that I want to discuss with you. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is in regards to the scripts and dialogues. Now, I'm not going to go too much in detail in regards to the scripts and dialogues. There is uh, what I call the anatomy of a buyer. This is, this is a slide that you actually get from coming to my training classes. You get a lot more, but this is a slide that you get from coming to the training class. And this slide is going to give you the concept of who a good buyer is. Who is a buyer? What is a buyer? What is a good buyer for you? In my terms, a good buyer is somebody that wants to buy a house in, in 30 days or less. Somebody that has the right market expectation, somebody that has high motivation, somebody that is being pre-approved by a lender or is willing to pre-approve by a lender. Uh, a five-star buyer is somebody that has two incomes, that reported income in their taxes the last two years, that their credit score is over 620, that they have some money saved for down payment and closing costs. You know, all of these things, right? So in order for me to figure out whether or not this is a good buyer or not during an open house, I develop 10 different questions that you need to ask. And you need to ask these questions. Now, somebody asked me the other day, 
Uh, how many questions do you usually, does it usually take before you can actually gauge if this is a good prospect or not? Here's my answer to you. I ask all 10 questions, and if they answer more than three, three or four, away in a way that I don't like them, then probably this is not a good prospect for me. I'll just pass on to those people and move on to somebody else. But it's totally up to you in regards to how you handle this. But my recommendation is that if you go to the open house, do not go to the open house without reviewing the questions. You really need to review the questions. You really need to memorize these questions. You need to practice these questions. You need to ask these questions. And there are 10 questions, and I honestly tell you this, there's 10 questions, these 10 questions, you can ask these 10 questions in about two minutes effortlessly. Effortlessly. I mean, I, you, it's not even, it's not, they don't even sound like questions. It's more like a conversation with people. So when you're talking to them, it sounds like a conversation. You know, questions like, for example, oh, how long have you been looking for a house? You know, oh, really? You've been looking for this long. And by when do you need to be in your new home? Oh, really? You, uh, that much? And uh, let me ask you, so are you going to buy the house by yourself or with somebody else? Oh, what do you do for a living? How's your credit? And things like that. Like, I have 10 questions that I develop that we can go over here. And, and, and you cannot do an open house without asking these questions. Because the last part of this, the part of the mega open house is this. First of all, you need to make your decisions. The decisions of doing the open house, the decision of marketing the open house, the decision of which is the right property, the decision of following up with your clients or your leads, etc. And then after that, the second part of the process is doing the marketing. How do you market that mega open house so you can bring a lot of people in? And the last part is, once the people come in, what questions to ask? That is the process. It's simple. It's, it's not complicated. This is not complicated, but you need to know the process. You need to know the process. And for that, you need to come to the class. So I highly recommend you come to the class. I am sorry that I spoke so fast. You probably didn't get half of what I said. But here's the, here's the important concept, though. The important concept is that this 30 minute is a condensation of three hours. You really need to come to the class. And I hope to see you here very soon. Remember, the classes are free. We, you know, in our company, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties, we, proud, we pride ourselves that we are one of the only companies that have training every day of the week except for Sunday. Every day of the week we have training, Monday through Saturday. We have training in the evenings. We have trainings in the mornings. We have trainings on Saturdays. We have all kinds of trainings. We have prospecting training, scripts and dialogues training. We have telemarketing trainings. We have open house training. We have uh, uh, contracts training. We have all kinds of training. Take advantage of that. I hope to see you in one of my trainings. Good day.